Harlem Fashion Row HBCU Summit. My name is Tanisha Jackson Warner. I am the founder of The Dream Project and I am thrilled to be here today. I'm honored to continue our partnership with Toyota. For the past five years, Toyota and The Dream Project have traveled the nation, empowering thousands of dreamers to dream big and providing them with the resources to drive their dreams forward. So it's only fitting that we are here today partnering with Brandis and the Harlem's Fashion Row community to fuel the future of fashion. And yes, you are the future of fashion. So in this session today, we're going to be talking about branding. As a marketer, I always think about branding in the terms of your brand should really capture what you stand for. Toyota is a brand that stands for continuous improvement. So it is our desire by being sponsors of this program that we provide you with tools and resources to fuel your personal and professional dreams forward. There are a couple things that I wanna remind you of before we get started. First and foremost, we want to invite you to visit the Toyota Dream Project virtual booth on harlemfashionroad.com. There you will find additional tools and resources to drive your dream forward. So what will you see there? Bonus content with some of the amazing ladies that I'm about to be speaking with. So Kalana Barfield-Brown, as well as Shiona Tarini will have bonus sessions, intimate fireside chats, where they're sharing with you a bit more about their personal stories in fashion. Secondly, you will find the Toyota My Style My Way quiz. We want you to take this quiz to learn a little bit more about your style, learn something about Toyota, as well as by taking this quiz, you will have an opportunity to win prizes. So throughout this entire program, Toyota will be giving away digital prize packs. You wanna take that quiz to sign up for an opportunity to win one of those prizes. So without further ado, let's get this session started. Today's session is about building your personal brand. The women that I am going to be introducing, they have successfully built personal and professional brands and they both attended HBCUs just like you. And they're here today to share their wisdom. And what a blessing to hear from HBCU graduates to share their blueprint. So first up, I have Kalana Barfield-Brown. And I want you to know these <laughs> ladies are dreamers. So <laughs> Kalana is the fashion and beauty editor. And she is also a Howard University alum. Come through HBCU <laughs> graduate. <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit about Kalana. Kalana Barfield Brown has carved out a niche for herself in a very competitive market in fashion and beauty. She began her career as an intern at InStyle before eventually being hired full time. Throughout her career at the magazine, she's taken on several positions, including beauty director, as well as fulfilled duties that range from writing in depth features to reporting live on red carpets. She's now a leading fashion and beauty expert who inspires a new generation of women to embrace beauty from within. She appears regularly on TV, including the Today Show, Good Morning America, The View, Extra Entertainment Tonight. Kalana was born and raised in Seattle and graduated with a BA in journalism from Howard University. She lives in Brooklyn with her husband, Dwayne, and her daughter, Dylan. Join me in welcoming Kalana. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Tell I have a new home. baby too. A new baby, Lennox as well. <laughs> oh, and Lennox, such a beautiful name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us. So wow. now we want to also bring in our second dreamer, Shiona Torini, costume designer and stylist who also attended Hampton University. Again, let's go with the HBCU graduates. Shiona Torini is a brand consultant and costume designer as well as stylist. 
In her 15 year long career in entertainment, fashion and publishing, Shiona has solidified herself as one of the industry's leading experts and has been commended for her work behind and in front of the camera. Shiona is the costume designer on HBCU's Insecure, season three, four, and five, which I love. <laughs> and she's also been nominated for a 2020 Costume Designer Guild Award for her work with Universal Pictures, Queen, and Slim. She's also participated as and style music videos for Megan Thee Stallion, as well as Solange and others. Prior to costume designing, Shiona served as a fashion editor for Cosmeto Cosmopolitan. She's also worked at Team Vogue, as well as W Magazine. She was born and raised in Bermuda, which remains very close to her heart. Shiona's brand consulting and styling clients work with a number of brands and publications, such as Bermuda Tourism, as well as Free People, Nike, The New York Times, Tiffany & Co., and Valentino, and more. I could just keep going on and on. Shiona, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to take part in this. Well, I just want to say to both of you again, it's so important for us to share our dream journeys with others in order to pass that blueprint along. And so let's dive straight into it. You know, today is all about building that personal brand. And my question that I want to start with is, we know the importance and benefits for an emerging designer to build a strong brand. However, for all of the HBCU students and alumni that they're here today, but they're not necessarily a designer, they want to be a fashion professional, how important is personal branding for a fashion professional? Um, I'll start. I, I think personal branding is important for a fashion professional or a professional in general, just across the board. I think it's, it's critical. And I think it's critical because it really does allow you to be your authentic self. And it makes room for you to be able to move throughout your career in an authentic way. So people know what to expect. Even if you're the only one who looks like you in a room, you don't have to dim yourself because you're able to move and speak the way you speak and, you know, be authentic when you show up. But I also think it's an about alignment and really aligning your who you are with what you do and how you do it and really connecting your passions to your work um, while remaining focused on like your purpose and your why. I love it. Remaining focused on the purpose and why. Mm -hmm. Shiona, what are some of the benefits of building a personal brand as a fashion professional? Well, you are essentially building a portfolio on yourself independent of any sort of corporate structure. So it's really important that your audience, no matter what platform you decide to focus on right now, it could be Instagram, it could be Twitter, it could be TikTok, gets a sense of who you are, um, gets a sense of what you stand for, gets a sense of what you believe in, um, because it expands your reach and it expands future opportunities. So it invites other collaborations into your world before when you were an editor at a magazine or when you were a stylist, you kind of were put into that box. But when you're building your personal brand, people get to experience different facets of your personality. So mm -hmm. you might work in fashion, but you might have a heavy interest for myself in like hiking, which might seem like random or um, might not seem like typical of a fashion person, but I'm able to speak to a different audience. I'm able to speak to a different market. And so building your personal brand, it really expands your world because you're inviting people inside like into it. Yeah. Now, what are some of the things that both of you did in your career early on to establish your personal brand? And I also want to know, like, it, share something with us about your personal brand. If you had to kind of capture it in words, uh, what is that? Um, well, I think we both were fortunate to be in a creative work environment where we were almost, you know, we never, we didn't work a corporate job. So it wasn't like we had a uniform. We could all, we are, we were free to express ourselves visually. So we were 
essentially like walking billboards for our own brand. We wore what we wanted to wear. We wore our makeup and our hair the way we wanted to wear it. So I think that definitely helped. But um, I think there's a lot of internal branding that happens early in your career, just, you know, working really hard, you know, and then maybe it's not something that people see publicly, but the industry knows. So working up, working really hard and just like always showing up in the most, um, in the most thorough way. So when someone's in a room and says your name, they can say, no, she's the real deal. She works really hard. She's reliable. Um, she's great at what she does. I think that that was, you know, that's a part of branding as well. Just, um, how hard you work and how much um, how much that carries throughout your career. Um, I think for me, one of the things that I did is, and it, and it was something that I didn't really want to do, but I started to do TV um, when I was an editor at InStyle, and that made me more visible. And although I was like really nervous when I started to do it, I pushed myself to do it because I knew that it would expand my audience and I knew that it would help to eventually propel, propel my career. So Sometimes you have to say yes, and you have to do the uncomfortable things, even if you, you know, it's something that you don't want to do, but it will, you know, it pushed me to, to keep on going and to get better and better. But that was something that I did just to continue to brand myself from the beginning, kind of early on as an editor. So one of the things that um, I share with some of our, our brand clients is your brand is not what you say it is. It's what people say it is when you're not in the room. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just hearing some of those words that you just said, hardworking, reliable, mm -hmm. in order to have someone say that, Kalana started building that as a personal brand Right. early on. Um, mm -hmm. So love, love, love it. Um, Shiona, tell me some of the things that you started to do early on in your career to establish your personal brand. I think that um, I have actually, I never looked at it as building a personal brand. I just looked at it as walking in my truth and being my best self and being authentic and just being true to myself and that reflected or that that developed into kind of a part of my brand. Um, one thing that I wasn't 100% comfortable with was sharing my work. I know that that sounds crazy, but I would do the work and I was happy with the work and I was proud of the work and I didn't feel like I needed to speak about it. I felt like my work would speak for itself. And I worked on a lot of high pro profile projects like styling formation or styling other music videos that, you know, you don't want to talk about because it's not about you. It's about the artist and it's about that. And it's about just like lending your creativity to a bigger story and a bigger picture. And so I had to really get comfortable with sharing my actual work and my actual projects and not just my personality. So kind of finding the fine line and the balance while still remaining, um, you know, keeping control over the narrative of like my personality. It's like, we share so much of ourselves right now on the internet and because of the internet. And I think that that is a beautiful part of brand building because people know what they're going to get. They know, you know, they know who they're going to get. I think that there's when there is a disconnect between the person that you see online and then the person you experience in real life, mm -hmm. it all falls apart. And uh, that's not someone that I think a lot of Browns want to work with. And that's not someone that, you know, is going to really move forward because the brand is fake. It's just not real. And mm -hmm. so kind of balancing like exactly who you are, uh, what you feel and your work and showing your work ethic, it gets tricky. And so that's something that I learned pretty early out, which I think helped me is to just find that right amount of balance and just think, okay, what exactly is this brand for? Is it to get me more clients? Is it to get me more styling jobs? Or is it just to like live in my truth and share my experiences? And that can make the perfect blending pot of a brand. And especially when it's your personal brand. So I just think that finding that balance um, is super important, um, especially with anyone trying to build a brand right now. It's just to know how much they want to share, what they want to share, and what the end goal is. I love it. So, so y'all are dropping so many nuggets so quickly. <laughs> the one thing I want to call out a commonality between what Kalana just shared and what Shiona shared. So, Kalana said that she ventured out into TV 
But at first she wasn't comfortable doing that. And then Shiona came back and also talked about at first not being comfortable sharing all of her work projects, but she did it anyway. So one commonality that I just heard here is both ladies, when faced with being comfortable and or uncomfortable, they were willing to stretch beyond their comfort zones and step beyond their comfort zones in order to achieve. That's a universal truth of a dreamer's journey. And so just listening to that, as you all are building your personal brands, know that you may even have to step outside of that comfort zone. So we're going to do one more question. Um, Let's see which one. What is the one thing that you would share with the attendees and viewers that they can start doing today to build their personal brand? Do you want to start, She? <laughs> <laughs> that's such a that's such a hard question or a loaded question because yeah. you know, uh, there couldn't possibly just be one thing. But I do feel um, like something that will keep you you focused is just to remain true to yourself and authentic to what to, authentic to the end goal. I think yeah. that that it's super important and it's really easy to get distracted in this industry. And it's really easy to get um, pulled in different directions. But when you kind of know what you want and you have a goal and you sit there, make yourself a list and think about these are the ways I think that I can get to this goal. uh, It will help you move towards it just because you can get pulled into many different directions. I don't necessarily think that going off the path is a bad thing because you get these opportunities and you're like, I've never done that before. I might as well try it. I've never done that before. That's scary, but I'm going to step into it. But as long as it brings you back to exactly where you feel like your life's purpose is and your soul's purpose is, I think that um, that's a one thing that I would share is just like to not lose focus and remain true to yourself and to your end goal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I a hundred percent agree with that, but I think another thing you could do too with keeping that in mind is to maybe start with just making a list of all the things that, you know, you're passionate about your goals, but also you're passionate about. So for me, yes, I've had this career in beauty and fashion, but I'm so much more than that. I'm a black woman first. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm an HBCU grad. And these are all things that I, that make me who I am and have shaped who I am as a person. So when I share my content, I try to share it as a whole and all the things that are meaningful to me. And, you know, that keeps me focused, but it also helps to align the things that I'm working, like the, it helps to align the business that I, that I work with. So, um, you know, I'm not just one thing. And I think when you just kind of write down what all the things that you're passionate about and you start to share that, I think it kind of comes back to you. And when you're building a brand, it's like, if you're into fitness, you know, share your fitness journey, you know, that's my, that might be outside of fashion, but share it. If that's something that you're interested in. Um, I think, you know, if you're on a fitness journey and sh- don't be afraid to be vulnerable as well, if you're doing the challenge, let people see that. Um, but I think that it's, you know, really just kind of like not making it one thing. Think about all the things that that you're passionate about and continue to share that um, when you're starting to build your brand. I love it. So if you're watching this session, they drop so many nuggets. I would definitely highly recommend you go watch it over and over and get those pins <laughs> out because I'm going to go back and watch it. Um, Shiona and Kalana, I just want to say thank you for sharing your wisdom and time today in this session. Um, if you're watching this, we want to make sure that let's support these amazing dreamers going forward. So please stay tuned and follow Kalana on Instagram. We're going to drop the handle in. Please follow also Shiona. Um, Ladies, we want to continue supporting you as you go forward. And thank you for being willing to pass the wisdom down. If you're watching it today, these are HBCU graduates. So they are living proof and examples that your dreams can be realized. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue to stay tuned for the rest of the program and make sure to stop over at the Toyota Dream Project booth at hfr.com. Thank you.